All right, guys, we're back here with Blaine in Pasco, Washington. How's it going, Blaine? It's going all right. How have you been doing it, bro, to stay out of the cold? Because the last few days have been freezing. I haven't been doing much other than bear it, grin and bear it, use those hand warmers. Um, the other night it got pretty cold. I ended up checking the shelter to see if it was open, and it was, it was accepting people. But the other night it wasn't. And it turned me away, which was disappointing, you know, disheartening. That I could go there and rely on it, but I couldn't. How old are you, Blaine? Thirty-five, unfortunately. You don't look thirty-five. You look Thank young. you. Hey, Thank bro, you. Um, are you from Tri Cities? I grew up here. I moved away for a minute, ten years or so. Had a life, a wife, a kid. Everything fell apart one weekend, and, and since then. I moved back here. Unfortunately, everybody in my grade moved on, figured out their shot, their niche, their career, and I should be doing my career, which is concrete or was curbs and gutters in Spokane. I was doing good, but lose your car and then lose your wife to a guy who has a car and then suddenly you lose your kid because she took him took her and then she ends up pregnant with somebody else's kid and I know it ain't mine because I haven't been with my wife and she hasn't been home in a while and now the bills are due and she's still gone hey bro question before I forget you, huh. said, you said that one week in your life changed forever what happened that week well, I I guess I ran with the crowd of guys that I used to work with, but they weren't working anymore. Like we were working in the concrete warehouse. They were working the street and I was working at Zips and I guess I, I guess I tried blues for what was the first time, and then that, it's not necessarily what started, but yeah, my life went to shit. So would you attribute it to what happened with your wife, or would you attribute it to uh, the, the blues? What would you attribute it to? That your life spiraled out of control. It was my own fault. Um, I guess I didn't listen to my wife. Me and her were fighting enough. I wasn't looking at the signs. I was too busy trying to hold it together and keep a job and pay the bills. Mm. I had a stay-at-home wife who stayed at home uh-huh. while I went to work and I don't know what she was doing or what she was up to. This car wants in here. Wife, anyway. Okay, needed, what you your, your wife what? She needed to get around, so I guess she found a guy that had a car or a, fu- a truck. When my car had just broken down, I had a Cadillac that my aunt gave me, and she knew the transmission was going out. I didn't know about it until it went out, pretty much. Hmm. It was an older car, and I didn't have enough money to fix it at the time, right then and there. So just sit around, but. Hey bro, so currently, how many blues are you doing today? Hmm, I might do one, maybe two. I, I try not to do a lot. I don't have money. I don't panhandle, I don't beg. I try not to get caught up in the whole blues thing. Yeah. But they are like a stool softener backwards. It's ridiculous. If you don't have one, you get sick. It's it's ingenious how it works. The science behind it is crazy. I don't know how they can take a solid and it turns to a liquid and then becomes a gas real quick. But it hey bro, what does. If you end up trying it once, you might like it. If you try it twice, 
you'll be hooked and then you'll be homeless at some point. Nobody likes the lewd, rude, crude, ignorant person that comes out of being a blues head or a blue bean or a blue, I don't know what to call it, but I think they're quaalude. How do you feel that average people treat homeless people? People look down on it and assume that homelessness is... It's it's a percentage, but it's it's indefinitely easy to be homeless and not realize you're homeless. I was homeless for like five, six years, but I had a spot to go, a couch to jump to, or a friend to rely on, or lean on, or uh, impose on, or something. My mom died this couple years now. It's been two years, and since then I've been just like really out, like really homeless hey bro uh just to get back to your kids real quick do you get to see your kids i haven't seen my daughter since she was four and she's probably 12 to 14 now and i we adopt i adopted her out because she needed a better life she needed better people than the people i had around me than the family i had at the time and since then my family has turned their back on me I have no reason why and the rest of them have died my mom died my little sister died my dad died why did they die they all had different issues but my mom went to hospice just decided one day she was gonna call hospice and without talking to me and I'm her only kid and everybody that's in the building that she lives the Sacagawea it was like all for it, and they pushed her towards it in a way. They pushed me out. They wouldn't even let me in the, to visit. And within like a month or two, she went from walking, talking, laughing, cooking, to bedridden and barely able to talk. And then one day they called and said to come over, even though they had trespassed me from the building. And other people were like sitting there with her whispering in her ear like the worm tail thing on the Lord of the Rings that scene where the king is all like stuck behind this whatever it is you know and the person that's with them is whispering in their ear and the king only listens to that person it was like that kind of but not it was just bedridden and hospice and medical gowns and hospice yeah I really wish my mom would have listened to me more but women tend to stick with women or at least women tend to be listened to over the men even though I'm the only male I'm the proprietor I wasn't seen that way in hey, this bro, case if you don't mind me asking why did your sister pass away um I, not sure she got sick or something COVID happened and she lives out of town and she lives in Oregon I don't know what happened, but I pray for her. I hope that she's in a better place. Hey, bro, um, would you be okay with doing a follow-up interview in the future? Perhaps, yeah. yeah I don't you know. Okay with posting this on my YouTube channel? Sure. What message do you have for your family or friends if they end up seeing this video? Hi, I'm sorry that I failed or didn't complete or couldn't jump through the hoops fast enough whatever hoops those were i know that someday i have a little girl that i need to talk to and explain things to but and i know she can read now i'm sure but i should send her a letter but i don't even know where to start i don't know how to be a father suddenly to a grow half grown little girl that all i can see is her as a four-year-old 
still and imagine her as the little girl I should be teaching things to, but I can't. It's hard for me to find worth and value in things because I don't have her. For sure, bro. But yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, bro. Thank you, bro. Nice meeting you.